Hey guys, this is Ben Tarver, the youth and family pastor at First Baptist Church in Thompson, Georgia. And uh, we're, we are going through our third video in the Parenting from Proverbs series. And I want to remind you, this series, we're kind of focusing in on certain verses and themes that, that come out of Proverbs and, and kind of jumping around to different chapters. But this by no means points out everything we can learn from Proverbs. Uh, we're, we're not covering the entire book in these videos. So I, I encourage you to read through Proverbs. An easy way to do that, to, to set up a, a reading plan, is to read one proverb a day for a month. And you'll basically, there's 31 chapters, and, and you'll basically get through uh, you know, almost a chapter a day by, by doing Today that. We're, we're talking about give God your best. Give God the best. And this comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. This is kind of the, our key verse for today. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and the vats will overflow with new wine. Now, this idea of first fruit from the harvest um, was given as a command way back in the Old Testament. Um, and uh, let me point out one of those verses. Then we'll kind of talk about what this is. This is from uh, Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. Every tenth of the land's produce, grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. If a man decides to redeem any part of the tenth, he must add a fifth to its value. Every tenth animal from the herd or flock which passes under the shepherd's rod will be holy to the Lord. He is uh, not to inspect whether it is good or bad, and he is not to make a substitution for it. But if he does make a substitution, both the animal and its substitute will be holy. They cannot be redeemed. So th that was a command from Mount Sinai. Moses giving to the people a, a message from the Lord uh, from that verse. And it talks about giving a tenth of, of the harvest, giving a tenth of the animals. And we got to remember the people of God all the way back you know, in Jesus' time and before uh, was mostly an agrarian culture, a, a, a farming culture. A lot of farming, uh, herds, shepherds. You know, we see a lot of those images throughout the Bible. And, and the harvest time was really important, for especially farmers. Very important. All the toil, all the, the blood, sweat, and tears that they had poured into the land and, and planting seed and, and getting things ready really came to fruition, literally, uh, during harvest time. So it was fruit for their labor. And the Lord said, you give a tenth off the top of what, you, uh, of what you've harvested. And what that does is it, it commands God's people that you're going to be dependent on him. The reason that you have plants and animals and livestock uh, to begin with is from the Lord. And you're going to give to him. And you're not going to pick and choose. It said, you know, from the shepherd, he doesn't pick and choose, you know, to keep for his own the better animal and, and give the, the Lord uh, the runts of, of, of the flock. That, that's not what he does. He's to, to go through at every tenth one um, without substitution, because there was a penalty for that, give to the Lord. And that shows our dependence on God that, um, you know, what we have is yours anyway, Lord. We're given a portion of that as an offering back to you. And we're not going to, we know you're going to provide and give back to us. So this is a, this is a great concept for life, uh, for the Christian. Our, our church is very strong in giving and tithing. And uh, we have uh, very obedient and, and uh, just gracious people that do that year in and year out. And it's truly a blessing that, that our church has that. So this is something that we train up our children to know this. Well, um, how do we do this? And, and what does that mean? Well, one connecting verse I wanted to talk about was uh, from verses 3 and 4. This is jumping back into Proverbs uh, chapter 3. Verse 3 and 4 says, Never let loyalty or faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck and write them on, uh, as a tablet on your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard in the sight of God and man. So I love those, those verses. Loyalty and faithfulness are two key words there. And that ties directly in, and not exclusively to what we're talking about, but definitely uh, connects into giving our best to the Lord. Uh, it's loyalty to, to our God, and it shows faithfulness, not only to God, but to other people. Um, so how do we do that? How do we give our best? Well, parents, we can show that by example. We can show that by example. And I bet, uh, you know, the, the parents, the grandparents, 
that have always been obedient to tithing probably learned that and saw that firsthand from someone else. Um, they either, you know, the Lord strongly impressed it upon their heart. Maybe they didn't see that, and the Lord just strongly impressed it upon your heart through a sermon or through God's word. Uh, but I, I've heard many testimonies of tithing before, and it comes directly from seeing a parent or seeing a grandparent being faithful to that. And um, so I know, and today, you know, today, a lot of people, especially with COVID and stuff, tithing has kind of turned more and more online, which, um, which is good and bad. It, um, it's good because, it, you know, it's, it's, it's easy, it's accessible. Um, we don't have to necessarily meet in person. You could be sick or, or in quarantine, you could still give, uh, which is good. You can continue faithfulness. The difficulty with that is showing by example to a child, uh, to a son and daughter, what it means. You know, seeing them um, watch you put a, a, an envelope you know, in the box uh, or, or an offering in the offering plate it makes it a little bit more challenging. So I, I encourage you to, you know, even if you give your main offering through online giving to, to bring something for an envelope or better yet, have the child show show that actually put the envelope in in a way they, they could do that. My kids are asking about allowances right now, how they, you know, they, they want to buy some stuff for themselves. So they're they want to buy some toys and things like that, and, and they want an allowance. So, so Chrissy and I have been working on that and, and are in the middle of setting up a system for that. But definitely what we want to tell them and show them is God's instruction for us to, to give first to him. Um, so I'm sure that's going to be a challenge to, to, to explain that, to show that to, to a child. But for them to physically go through that action, even if it's 10 cents of a dollar that they've raised, you know, given that 10 cents in the offering and, and for them to do that at early age, I think will stick with them uh, throughout life as they grow. Uh, number two is to prepare for upcoming opportunities. This is another way we can do it. We're not just talking about money here. We're talking about our abilities, our, our opportunities, uh, our time that we give back to the Lord. Uh, you know, I share that with youth a lot of times uh, coming up on Mission McDuffie and other, you know, service opportunities and, and with children. A lot of times children and youth have time and availability uh, and, and, and people that are retired. They hit, might have availability during the day uh, or during part of the work week that other people can't. So to give back part of your time is also an offering back to God. Uh, so when we can prepare our, you know, our hearts to really say, God, I'm giving what I've gotten, you know, my ability, my time, I'm giving that portion back to you. And I think we can show that to, to a child, to a youth, when there's an upcoming opportunity. Maybe, uh, maybe it's serving in some capacity, and, you know, they would rather go to the swimming pool and, and spend time with friends. But maybe they haven't spent, spent a lot of time giving back their time to the Lord. Uh, and, and that's an opportunity to have a discussion about that and, and to share, you know, this is important to, to give back of yourself, give back of your time. And, uh, and I know, you know, without jobs and stuff like that, you know, looking at, at students and, and stuff, often, you know, poor college students, this might be a time that you can give your time and, and do disaster relief, you know, go on a mission trip. Uh, give your time when you have more flexibility to do that than maybe further down the road when you're married with kids. Uh, not that you can't do that then, but you have more flexibility in parts of life than other parts. And here's another um, idea for parents. If you can focus your discussions more uh, looking past wins and losses and, and only on a child's individual success. And yes, we want to, I'm not saying don't celebrate a win in sports. Don't, you know, uh, we want to tell our child that they did a good job. But it's not really taking that away. It's adding something more or looking a little bit deeper into that discussion. So if a, you know, if a child wins, you can say, you know, great job today. Um, isn't it amazing God has given us the ability to, you know, hit a baseball? Isn't it amazing that God has, has blessed you? I, I, see a, uh, I see a gift in you of music, and, and you're really showing that. And, uh, you know, in, in a way, like if you're in music, that's an opportunity that you can give back to the church or uh, serve in some capacity to, to sing or play an instrument. So that's that's an example or a, a church sports league, you can give back to the Lord. And in, including the losses. 
So when there's a loss, you can change it around, you know, and instead of just saying, well, I'm, I'm sorry you lost, you'll get them next time. You say, hey, you know what? Uh, you tried really, really good out there. And God has given us the ability to, to work on things, to improve on our game and on ourselves. And that's an amazing thing that we can actually, not only do we know how to do this, you know, to catch a football or, uh, you know, to play the piano, but we can actually keep working at it and, and get better at our skill. Uh, so that, I think that's important to add to the conversation. It's just adding it, uh, you know, just a little different direction about what you do it. So not just complimenting the child for themselves, but just realize that the, the blessings, the things that the, you know, your child and yourself that you accomplish are because of the Lord to begin with. We could do nothing without what he has given us. Another thing is God loves a cheerful giver. We're kind of end on this. So we're not just giving out of spite. We're not giving with a bad attitude. That means nothing to God. You could give the same amount as somebody else, but God looks at the heart. You know, if you're, um, if you're, you're gritting your teeth and you're angry, and, uh, and we got to help kids out with this too, because I, I could see the, the struggle already coming, you know, with children to explain, you know, God wants us to give, uh, give cheerfully. You know, your money, uh, you know, you know, if they made $10, your dollar that you're giving, um, or it could be more than a dollar. What you're giving goes back to the church. It helps us with ministry. It helps us with, and you can just start talking about things that the church does, that this helps bless other people. And I think that's important to have that conversation to make sure the heart is in the right attitude to give. And that includes us adults. That, that, that's not just talking about kids. That includes us. God loves a cheerful giver. That's from uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Um, so God bless you as you have these discussions and, and these opportunities. I think it's a, a great thing to talk with kids and to show that God wants us to give the best because it comes from the Lord to begin with. And this is a lifelong lesson that we continue to learn and relearn um, as a child going into adulthood. God bless.